fans in here? No? <laughs> Berkeley, USC, UCLA, Stanford? What's up here? No, uh, yep. uh, yeah, you got Stanford, you have, uh, yeah, you have San Jose State, but not any of the big schools like that. Yeah. Oh, why, are you a big college football fan? Uh, just Michigan. That's okay. only I watch is Michigan. Nice. Or a big, huge bowl game or something, but it's got to be yeah, Michigan sure. or it's got to be that championship yeah. game, otherwise I'm... Do you watch pro football? Yeah, Raiders fan. Okay. This year, though, oof. Yeah. <laughs> Man, it's bad, like... Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much well, for joining you. us. Um, I'm Sterling from the Harley Heroes podcast. Um, all right, let's just uh, jump into this. So, uh, you know, how did you get into acting? Was it something you wanted to do at a young age? Is it? Uh, you know, my my first acting uh, experience was actually my freshman year of high school, and it was in Peter Pan. I played Smee. And, and I only took drama because in eighth grade, you know, you had to pre pick a classes you were going to take in, when you went to high school. And I just thought, oh, it'll be an A, right? Mm -hmm. Just a fluff class. And um, I didn't even intend to try out for the play, and I didn't. Mm -hmm. The drama teacher just said, you're going to be whatever. And because everybody was like, ah, oh, she's going to make you be Tinkerbell, or blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, <laughs> Why? But Why it was is good. that? Yeah. She, she, she's actually, I gave her a lot of credit because I was, you know, ninth grade, that's when you really start experimenting with a lot of stuff, and I was, you know, um, you know, the stuff that's legal now, I was doing then, and it wasn't yeah. legal. But <laughs> she got me out of that, because then I, because my, my buddies, we were doing, like, on the way to school, during school, after school, so my was going, shh. So drama kind of like pulled me back up out of it, nice. and um, yeah, then Shmi would have been a fun character. Shmi, yep, Shmi. That's why I'm. So here I was, you know, started as a pirate, and I'm still a pirate. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> That's what I say. Then it comes full circle. Yep. How you know? I mean, we can delve into that. I mean, pirates is cool. I mean, uh, they, you know, when we did uh, pirates, the first one, I was working on um, Haunted Mansion and Looney Tunes back in action. Mm -hmm. And Disney had thought at the time that Haunted Mansion was going to be the the money maker, and they didn't know what Pirates was going to do. And uh, somebody came up and said, "Hey, uh, Marty is a stunt guy," and he's like, "Hey, you should go uh, meet the uh, stunt coordinator. They're going to be doing a, a movie on the Pirates of the Caribbean." I'm like, oh, "Dude, I'm I'm busy doing these other two films." Mm -hmm. I was like, "Nah." He's like, "No, I think you really should." And uh, so I called and talked to the guy and. Okay, yeah, I'll find something. So I was just originally just supposed to be like just a day player, maybe, you know, do a stunt. And it was wow. during the scene, like when he first gets out on the ship and it's really storming and I'm on a rope and uh, I'm off my feet swinging back and forth in the middle of the storm. And that was my, my payday. And then, uh, but then Gore, the director, just always found something else to, you know, to uh, use me. And then, you know, Marty became, Marty went from, originally his name was Dirk in the script, mm -hmm. and then ended up being Marty just because he was like, hey, Marty, do this or that. <laughs> and so I'm in one of the few that has, like, you know, Jack has a regular name. Everybody else has some kind of, yeah. you know, weird name. So Hector Bar Barbosa. Or well, it's kind of funny <coughs> you were uh, touching on that when you were saying how Disney thought Haunted Mansion was going to be big. I'll tell you mm -hmm. truth, when Pirates was going to come out, I'm like, is this really going to be? Right. Big and right. that franchise, I mean, is huge. It's such a big money maker, and to see it grow into yeah. what it is now, I would have never guessed when it I, first came out. You know, they they tried. To, they were going to fire Johnny. I'm sure you've all heard that, but mm -hmm. they were going to fire him because they were like, "What are you doing?" Like they thought he was he trying to do gay, or he was trying to do this or that. He's like, "No, trust me, I know what I'm doing." And so they stuck with him, and you know, and it paid off. I mean. In the box office, Pirates won. Uh, it only made like six hundred fifty-five million. That's a big deal. Yeah, definitely. But, <laughs> I'm like, you make it seem two, like it was chump change. Well, yeah, but like the second one, oh, well. uh, it made one point oh eight billion, and then the third one was just right around a billion, and the fourth one I don't know because I didn't see it. So you're like, I don't need to be a part of that. And then uh, the fifth one we made. Uh, 
just under 800 million. But now the funny thing is residuals, because that's how actors really make their money, unless you're like Johnny or something. Like he made 80 million to do the last Pirates. That's sick. <laughs> yeah, really, I mean, and this is the guy who's spending, you know, some people say it's 30,000 a month, and some people say it's like $400,000 a month on wine. Uh, you know, it's like, wow, that's, you know, that's some people's half their career make, you know, their $50,000 job or not. Or maybe not up here, you guys are, you know, really wealthy, but <laughs> most of middle America, you know, we, you know, a $60,000 job a year, you're sitting fat in a big 4,000 square foot home back in the Midwest and, you know, property and everything else, but, um, yeah, so, but the, like, my first residual check from the first Pirates was 69000 That was more oh, wow. than I made while I was filming it, but then, even though Pirates 2 <coughs> doubled in the box office, what we did in P1, my first residual on P2 was 30 some thousand. So the Disney, we always say, uh, you're not working for the mouse, you're, you're working for the rat. Because <laughs> all the big boys, they know how to hide the money. They, it's all the shell game. They figure out, oh, okay, well, now we'll hide it this way. We'll say we had to spend it all on this, or marketing, or this or that. And, and then three made almost a billion dollars and then my check, my first residual check was like 15,000. So it just kept going. So, uh, you know, they, and now you got all these people who pirate, you know, movies and they film them and they sell them online and that really hurts the actor. You know, the real actor is like, I mean, Johnny's a real actor obviously, but he's, he doesn't have to worry. I mean, he's getting so much of the box office and this and that plus his salary. And, but it's the, all the other guys who like, like Johnny's the steak, but you still need the potatoes and the vegetables and the salad. And the he can't and do the whole movie himself. Right. I get that. The, it's the rest of those that we, you know, we live for, you know, the residual part of it. And um, so when you got people pirating stuff. Dang, that's. Yeah, pirating, getting pirated. Well, yeah, <laughs> did, yeah. yeah. Um, what I th thought was crazy is I would have thought it would have been opposite of your residuals, but that's yeah, crazy did. to hear it. Yeah. Half each time. Yeah, and I like how you say they, you know, they yeah, just they, learn how to move the money game. around. Yeah. Be, you know, oh, we spent this much on marketing, and it's like, well, you know, you as the actor, you can't. We're gonna you say, I want to audit. I want yeah, the books. Yeah. <laughs> you know, then you won't work. Well, you know? that and you're working for a juggernaut like right. Disney. I mean, Disney, they. I mean, they own everything now, like Marvel, yeah. right? Yeah. No, they own Marvel. Uh, they just bought a, a Fox. Right. Well, most of it. They, so. they don't own Fox News, though, right? No, they, yeah. No, they don't. That's my channel, sorry. <laughs> I'm probably the only Republican in the room right now, but it's okay. <laughs> um, but I, I think that's funny. It's like the only thing they didn't buy was the news part, but they own everything else. Yeah, they were like, we don't want the news, but yeah. the rest of it, let's take all of that. So um, you were a stunt actor as well, right? Yeah, I'm a stuntman, actor, stunt actor, whatever yeah. you want to call it. It's now, uh, I got to talk to you briefly a little bit, but I wanted to talk about Scrubs. Oh, yeah, Scrubs. That was a, uh, a big show for me. I thought it was so much fun. Uh, the cast was super great. Yeah. And how was it being a part of that show? I was telling you earlier, like, it was cool because we filmed it at, it's an old, it was an old hospital. It's not there anymore. They, since the show closed, they tore down the building and put up these, like, I want to say five-story, like, really expensive apartments or mm. condos, whatever you want to call them. Um, but the the first floor, that's where the cafeteria was. And you know, they would shoot like they, you know, coming into the hospital or whatever. And the second floor, all the, um, the you know, the hospital rooms, they turned them into um, dressing rooms. Oh. So everybody had their own like, you know, dressing room all done up, you know, the guys who are like main, main cast. And they provided everybody with, um, they all had like scooters or like little cars and they would, you know, race around on, in the hallways and have fun and they encouraged you to bring your dog to work because they, they had somebody on staff that was paid. That's all their job was to do is like walk people's dogs and go outside. But this way right. your dog wasn't sitting at home all day. It was, you know, got to be with you and all that other stuff. Cool. So it was really cool. I mean, uh, I love Neil. Uh, I worked with Zach, you know, that and I did. Uh, Oz, you know, because he was in Oz, the Great and Powerful, but he was 
He played the the monkey's voice. Yeah, Zach's a funny so, guy. Yeah, I follow him guy. on social media. Yeah, he's a great guy. So do you got to kick people? Did they wear cups? I don't really kick them. I mean, in a real stunt world, you, you pull your punch. That's what I thought. So it looks like you're hitting, but I'm not. I mean, I I can tap you, and you know, yeah. oh, I got. It's like I flicked you like that, but I mean, but I'll sell it like you mm-hmm. know, oh, like you really got punched. Yeah, because my co-host like you got to ask if people were wearing cups, and I was, no. like, I was like, no, I was like, there's no way. Yeah. But um, no, I really just thought that'd be really fun to talk about because that show was really cool, and you were kind of telling me how yeah. it ended and stuff like that. So that yeah, they really should have cool. stopped at the end of eight. Uh, Mm-hmm. When we're all saying goodbye to him as he's leaving the hospital, and it was like perfect. And the whole thing is that whole show is about this guy's warped. You know, he's always thinking in his head, like we all think about. You know, like right. I'm looking at the guy in the back row, going, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> it's out, out, it's out loud, right? But so when they went and did it with James Franco's little brother, or whatever, and uh, it's just, it's like it didn't make any sense because the whole yeah. show is about being inside JD's head. Well, and I love that you said that because I thought that was really cool when we were talking about it, so I was really glad you got to share it with everybody else. Um, you worked with Chris Pratt on yeah, Jurassic World. Jurassic World. I've, um, part of the stunt world is you also do things where you're in, like, mocap suits. Mm-hmm. So it's basically be, like being in head-to-foot pajamas. Okay. But then they put these uh, little white mm-hmm. balls on certain places and then they can digitally come in and like, when we did Pirates, all like Davy Jones and all those guys, they weren't really walking around like these cool, you know, shark head things or fish things, no. They were just in pajamas with these little X's and balls and then later on they just, the digital guys go in and they draw these, you know. So, you know, it's, it's kind of funny to be working with somebody who's in pajamas and <laughs> trying to like picture what, you know, Davy Jones look like and we had no idea, like, these tentacles are all moving, and you're just... So when you see the movie, you're like, wow, that's awesome. But, um, yeah, I don't even know where I was going. See, I've been <laughs> dropped in my head too many times. And, and, <laughs> and how hard is that, like, trying to act in a green screen environment? Oh, that's what it was, yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, for, like, uh, Jurassic World, I was uh, a couple of different dinosaurs, but... I was ones that were small that were like fighting with Chris Pratt, like actually on him on the ground. Yeah. And Bryce Howard, which is Ron Howard's daughter, yeah. she was supposed to try to knock me off with the butt of a, of a gun. And one of the times that we were shooting it, she actually hit me and it cut my head open, but I, you know, I fell off like I was supposed to fall off. And so when they said cut, and then Chris looked over and you know, I was bleeding and I got up and I was, okay, we're gonna go again. And he's like, I, he was, I guess he talked about it on, um, Jimmy Kimmel, and it's the one show I would never do because I hate Jimmy Kimmel. Oh. So it's like to be talked about on Jimmy Kimmel. It hurts. And, yeah, it's kind of like, and then they actually ended up taking that excerpt and putting it on the DVD. Like, oh, wow. I don't know if it's an Easter egg or if it's just like, like you know, one of the things at the end commentary stuff. Mm-hmm. But it talks about how that happened, and then Chris was like, he's like, oh my god, I was like, I, I thought we killed Marty, you know? And all <laughs> so it's kind of funny. So, so yeah, you just you know. Put the put a little bit of saliva on your cut, and that'll slow down, yeah. you know, excessive bleeding until you can get taken care of. So. I, what is probably the funnest part about being a, a stuntman or doing stunts? I, I just think it's um, the exhilaration and the you know the. Uh, there's only been once that I've ever done a stunt where I was like, I wanted to back out at the last second. I was just what? like, oh my god, they talked me into going up to um, Vancouver. And the highest point in Vancouver is a mountain called Mount Whistler. Mm-hmm. So they're like, yeah, do you know how to snowboard? And I lie, and it's like, yeah, you know. <laughs> I had skied growing up, but I, I'd never snowboard. But I thought, oh, how hard could it really be, you know? So like, yeah, well, we just need you to kind of come off this, the top of the mountain, and down maybe 20 feet, and then just kind of land it, and then, you know, snowboard off. And I was doubling a chimpanzee. It was in um, Most Valuable Primate. This little stupid kids thing Mm -hmm. and but when we got up there the the ski lift doesn't even go up that high they had to like go all the way up with the lift and then got on snowmobiles to go up higher and when I got up there it wasn't 20 feet it was like 100 feet and I'm like dude there's no way you know I could come off the top and try to land that 
So they, oh, okay, so then they lowered a guy, another stunt guy, uh, down from the top, and they went about 20 feet down, so now it's 80 feet. But he dug a hole in the side of the, in the snow, so it was like a cave, and then they lowered me into it and then pulled me back into it, and then on action, um, I'm supposed to, like, you know, come flying out of this thing. So they had to push me out. <laughs> uh, you, know, you have no momentum. I'm, yeah, I was I'm like stationary. But the whole time, I, when they were like, okay, you ready? And I'm like, I was like, you know, saying my Hail Marys and everything. And I was like, dude, this is the time to just say, you know, I'm done. Uh, I don't want to do yeah, this. Yeah, and here's your money back or, you know, or, hey, I'm a, I'm a wuss, whatever. But, but I ended up doing it. And then we had to do it like three times. And, <laughs> so every time I would land, I really didn't know how to snowboard, so I would land and I would end up almost doing cartwheels like on my head, you know. Jeez. So it was like almost snap my neck and okay, well, do it again. If you got one more in you, I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I can't believe you did it three now, times. Yeah. So now I think twice more like, you know. You don't lie as much. You're like, ah, oh, you know, yeah. maybe I can't snowboard. So. I jumped a car in um, Project X. I drove a car in the pool, and I did exactly what they told me. Hit this mile an hour, and hit it this thing. And there was all the guys that were still in the pool were stunt guys. They don't leave, yeah. you know, background people in the pool. So if I wouldn't have deviated just a little bit with the steering, I would have killed the guy that was in the pool because he was at the other end, and they didn't realize that the car was going to make it that far. <laughs> And when I turned it just enough that when I went up, that the front of the car hit this edge and this edge, so it left in the corner, the actor was able to be in there. Because otherwise, I would, if I would have went the way I was supposed to, I would have just, you know, splatted him across. But luckily, boom, and then uh, luckily, yeah, he's still He's still, he's still alive. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> then I had to swim out. They had the whole bottom of the car cut out. So then I had to swim out from underneath the car, and uh, yeah. Was that? Do you have a favorite stunt? Sorry, I'm really intrigued by this. No, no. I, anytime you get a paycheck, to, is it? it's good. <laughs> That's what I've, I did. Or I was at a panel one time, and they were like, "Oh, you know, what's your favorite?" And he was like, "The paycheck mm -hmm. that comes in after yeah. the movie. That's yeah. my favorite." Actually, there was one, actually I did an episode of Grimm, and uh, me and my two buddies. We were like these kids, but when they ate uh, fruitcake around the holiday time, they turned into like these little werewolves or something. So, and we were just wreaking havoc. And they had me do this thing where I was up on the top of this, um, this is up in Portland. And in some of the houses up there, they have three stories. You know, you have the little ground level and this, and then they have like the attic, which is still like another part of the house. Oh, that's cool. So they had me all the way out to the top of the roof, and the, the, the steep going down off the roof they wanted me to slide off. I was like, oh shit. So, you know, I'm supposed to be up there and I kick the plastic Santa off the roof, you know, I'm supposed to be going crazy. And then I'm, I, you know, I fall down face first and go sliding off the roof and into some boxes. And those aren't always even, you know, everybody thinks, oh, you land into a mat. Well, sometimes they do mats, but sometimes they do just the cardboard boxes and that takes a lot mm -hmm. of your fall, you know. But, it still kind of hurts, you know. I bet it does. If you hit the edge just wrong, you know, it could hurt you or whatever, the edge of a box. If it doesn't fold in correctly, so yeah. that one was probably pretty good. Was, you know. I've known guys that have made, one guy did a stunt where he went from, uh, it wasn't a Tom Cruise film, but it was something where, like, a guy was going from one plane to another plane on a cable, mm. and uh, they said how much, do, you know, back in the day, you used to be able to, you know, give them a quote like, this is how much I want to do the stunt. You don't do that nowadays. You're just happy to have a job. That's how Hollywood is. But the guy said, a million dollars. So they paid the guy. Because at that cable, he had no back, you know, no parachute, nothing. At that cable, if either of those planes would have stretched the wrong way, and that cable would have broke. That would have been it. He would have all the way to the ground. But luckily, you know, they, two experienced, you know, pilots and, they were big planes, like 747 size Jeez. planes. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that and, you know, a million dollar stunt right there. All his own stunts. He says he does, but he, you know. I wanted to know that. Cause no, there's, I mean, there's just things. I mean, he's a producer, 
He just, you know, he, yeah. he's an executive producer and also a lot of his stuff because I think he's like the, the head of, uh, I don't know, it's one of the smaller production companies. You know, it's not Disney, obviously, but one of those ones that's still around. But, um, you know, so he can he can call the ball. But there's just certain things like the insurance company's not going to insure if, like, if Johnny Depp is going to do it because if he gets hurt, then production shut down, oh, yeah. or if yep, he yep, dies, yeah. then it's done. Or now everything you just shot is, you know, for waste. So yep. that's why you have to have stunt guys. So there's only a few of us, like me, and guys that are they're not just stunt guys; they're actors, but they're not big enough actors where it's like, you know, there's no way right. they're gonna let you. Right. Yeah. So stunt. I know there's like three guys personally that do Johnny's. Uh, I mean, that do Tom Cruise's stunts. And one time. They kind of keep that like a little bit of a secret because kind of, everybody's like, yeah. that's his, not his claim to fame, but a big yeah. thing that but he But he does do a lot of his own stuff, but like that last film, he was going across and trying to land on the other side of the building and he broke his ankle because he didn't make it all the way there. And so they had to shut down for like six weeks. Well, you know, he had that taken care of and um, uh, it's, you know, it, it's yeah. crazy. So, no. Yeah. Um, you also worked uh, on a uh, couple films, Feast. Uh, two and three. Two and three. How was yeah. that? It was good. I was I, pl I got to play um, uh, one of two brothers, and you know he, my brother and it was supposed to be a. Um, it was not my real brother, but it was a, a little Mexican guy, but he was a real luchador wrestler. Mm -hmm. So that was his th thing, and real uh, supposed to be in the movie like he's a luchador wrestler, and I'm just a. Um, we owned like our own like tea, a key making company or whatever, but oh, wow. these creatures, you know, were taking over the town, and so I got to do that. And then they said, "Hey, we want to have a, a a small creature," and these monster things, like one of them, like mated with a cat, like a house cat. So there was like a hybrid monster cat. So they had me uh, don on this whole outfit. It was it's really hot. I mean, you got to use a lot of uh, baby powder because it's really sweaty and everything. And I fall out of a, you know, like a ceiling, you know, through the tile and come down and trying to kill the girl or whatever, but it was cool. It was in like some backwoods town, like in uh, Louisiana, and three of the corners, it was like a four-corner town, and three of them had churches on it, oh, wow. and we filmed on a Sunday one day, and here we had, you know, girls running around, you know, not fully dressed. Yeah. And you got people coming out of church, and there's oh gore and blood and monsters, and girls hilarious. running around not fully dressed. You're just like, you know, and here's a you know Baptist church, a Protestant church, and something else. Yeah, they're all looking like what the, you know, though, though, mm -hmm. what is going on? Yeah, it's kind of like whoa. But those are the kind of things you kind of chuckle at, don't you? Oh yeah. <laughs> These people never get out of here. You know, it was like the same town that like um, Terry Bradshaw's from. Majority of the city. It's somewhere down yeah. there. I was laughing when I was uh, getting ready to interview you, well, doing some research. My wife was uh, super excited. She found out you're friends with the people from uh, Little Big World. Oh, Little People, Big World. Yeah. Roll off, yeah. And she was like super excited about because she loves that show, and I thought that was funny. Yeah, Zach and I are leaving Tuesday for um, Argentina. We're going to, because um, we have our own sports team that we've had for now, like the last. We used to be competitors, and we. We got together, made up a team together, and oh, no we got invited by the uh, all the countries in South America. They they think they're going to school us in soccer <laughs> because you know South American. Yeah. It's kind of like England they, or over in Europe, soccer is their sport. So we're going to go there and see you know show them that either the Americans still rule or you know yeah maybe we don't know what we're doing. That's cool. When it comes to soccer, but they play that all year round. I mean, that, yeah, you're a big soccer fan then. Yeah, I, I couldn't tell you. What, Name of no. the team. Oh, okay. So I mean, I play soccer with my buddies, but I don't, I don't know anybody professional. Pele. Do you play uh, outdoor or indoor? This one's gonna be indoor too, oh. on a basketball court. Indoor. So it's gonna be like Ooh. on a wood, you know, basketball court. That's gonna be hard. Yeah. I played indoor on, you know, like a turf. Dude, that is way harder than it's regular. A lot soccer. faster. Yeah. Yeah. The ball moves a lot faster, but you also have like the walls to play off of. Yeah, which is nice, but yeah. at the same time. I uh, went with a couple of friends of mine. We were playing, and I was dying. Yeah, you get winded really fast. Yeah. The speed 
it just pulls all the energy right out of your legs. Mm-hmm. You get almost running too fast for your own good, or you, for some reason, it seems like every, you're running in slow motion while everybody else is just shooting up and down. Fast. You're just like, oh my god, you know. You're brave playing on a on a basketball court. Yeah. I feel that'd be really. Yeah, we're we'll probably tweak some ankles or something. Yeah, you know, good luck. So we uh, have some Hardly Heroes questions that I like to ask all of our guests just to kind of get some insight. So I uh, wanted to know if you had a favorite superhero. I, I mean, I never, I, the We're only time I ever collected that? any uh, comics when I was a kid, it wasn't even until I was in high school, and I, I was always a Spider-Man fan. Nice. But, um, like the first set of Spider-Man movies came out, I didn't like much because Tony I remember, yeah, I remember um, Gwen Stacy before Mary Jane. Mm-hmm. So they finally did it right the, the second time around. The Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah, and, but it just seems like, how many times you got to re- keep doing this story? It's like, it's like the Batman thing. Like, I liked Michael Keaton as Batman. I don't need to see Christian Bale mm-hmm. as Batman. Michael Keaton, when he got to go back into the Marvel Universe and play a villain as, um, on the blank right Vulture. now. Vulture. Yeah, Vulture. I was super excited because I've always been a big Michael Keaton fan yeah, and I love to see him play a villain and a hero, but him as a villain is way more like, yeah. he's just a really... I love Michael Keaton. He's one of my favorite actors. Yeah. Have you ever got to meet him? Nope. No. I'm trying to mm-hmm. think. Nope. You're like, home. Um, uh, also, a favorite villain? Do you have a favorite villain? Uh, Cesar Romero as the Joker mm-hmm. in the original Batman series. Nice. Like I love Jack Nicholson, but dude, I mean, and Heath Ledger was awesome too as the Joker. Mm-hmm. I don't know, who, the new Joker's supposed to be even more cool, but yeah, I, to me, the fact that Cesar Romero pulled that off, because a in real life Cesar Romero was gay, mm-hmm. and for him to pull off like such a badass dude, it's like, yeah. you know, he totally leaves his personality at home and. Yeah, and plays this yeah, character. Then, like, one of my favorite movies, I'm a huge Shirley Temple kind of a fan, so, like, uh, The Little Princess. Uh-huh. Cesar Romero's in there. He's the, uh, the the Indian guy that's next door with the turban. Mm-hmm. So it's like you get to see uh-huh. Cesar Romero without, you know, all the Joker makeup on and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he, he just plays, like, you know, like, this housekeeper guy and who's taking care of this rich old, old guy. And, oh, that's cool. So it's like, wow, just a great, you know... Yeah, Very yeah. versatile actor. I like guys like that. Um, my last one is uh, very weird, but if there was a zombie apocalypse <laughs> and you had to have a weapon and it couldn't be a gun, what would it be? Like, we've gotten bats. I got a, uh, actually um, had somebody say an ice cream cone, which was pretty <laughs> funny. It was actually um, uh, the lady from, I'm drawing a blank, from Old Yeller, um, Beverly Washburn. Beverly Washburn, thank you. Yeah, I never saw all the other ones. Yeah. Uh, God. Not, I don't know. I mean, I grew up in Detroit, so I'd probably be a hockey stick because I know how to play hockey, but it definitely wouldn't be no like lightsaber or anything yeah. like that. That's, <laughs> hockey stick, I see you play. Yeah. That's play pretty hockey. cool. Well, I mean, everybody in Michigan, just like Connecticut. Yeah. Michigan's like Canada, too, but, you know. I've never been a, I'm not very good at ice skating i've tried plenty of times mm-hmm. yeah it's it takes a while to learn some people can only go over one foot over the other mm-hmm. with a certain way like not yeah. everybody can go left over right left over right or right over left you know it's usually you you can only you're really only strong one way one yeah yeah putting one leg over the end so that's why it's well like you mm-hmm. got to give guys a play mm-hmm. hockey like the fact that they can you know Ooh, and how tough they are too dude. yeah oh yeah so uh, at this time, I wanted to open it up to the audience uh, to ask you some questions. Yeah. Um, so, you said that when you were doing the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie, you were kind of surprised at how much Corver Vincent gave you to do as right. the mm-hmm. shooting went on. So, how did it feel to, as the films went on, uh, to see kind of your character Evolve. given more to do and develop? And if there was a sixth one, which I'm hearing there might be, would you come back? I don't know if there's going to be one. I asked Johnny. To- Two weeks ago, and I just talked to Terry Rossio two days ago, and Terry was uh, let go before the end of five. Kind of, they kind of had a falling out. So, and Ted, it was Terry and Ted who wrote them, 
and Ted wasn't even involved in like the last two. Yeah. So if you don't have Terry, you know, yeah. who's gonna who's gonna be able to write a genius that you know? Yeah. I know Jerry would do it if Johnny wants to do it, because there's obviously money to be made. But you know, it didn't even make. I don't think it made 200 million stateside. It made most of its money overseas. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, I've always said if you're gonna if you're gonna do a sixth one, then maybe do one where, uh, piracy was only so long, you know, it was a short period. So maybe mm -hmm. either Jack goes straight, or we all go down for the last time, and that's it for real. Or uh, I don't know, just I don't know what would they go with it, but. I know there's, you know, people keep sending me links on my Facebook and, hey, there's an article that says, and I'm like, okay, and then I'll text, you know, I ain't heard nothing, and, you know, so yeah, I'm like, I have to believe from the real people and, you know, whatever, some article, you know, yeah. wishful thinking. I mean, yeah, I'd love to do it in the Pirates, but. Yeah, I know. We did the last one in Australia, and I wouldn't want to go back to Australia because it's just, it's, it's very American, so it's like, why do I want to go out way over there? I moved to LA oh. to be in the business. I didn't move to Australia to be in the business. Yeah. So like whatever tax break you thought you were getting, no. well, we all had to be away from our families for eight months. So in all that money you got to spend on housing and flying and food and like, let us just, let's just do it here, but you know, in, the, in California or whatever. And you know, we can all go home at night and open our own mail and love on our own dogs and you know, our kids and whatever. But, or go back down to the Bahamas at least, you know, at least stay in this hemisphere. Going to Australia, that's a 24 hour trip just to get there, so, you know. Yeah, the Bahamas, you know, that sounds like fun. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. I mean, they're, they get kind of, you know, not everybody likes it when they're there. They, they would, there would be like islanders who would like, we'd try to go out at night in the little town area, or the square they called it. And there would be islanders there that would like try to pick fights with some of the, oh, no the crew guys because, you know, were the Americans there and they, so any of the tourists there or any of the local women think, oh, those guys got all kinds of money. So they just kind of like flock to you. So then the local guys get all mad. Yeah. And then they want to pick a fight. And it's like, you know, mm -hmm. no, nah, I don't, you know, I don't need yeah. all that. And what about your character development for your character? How did that, how did that go? Oh, I just. Gore's a genius. I mean, I tell people all the time, you know where Gore got his start? Do you know what his first, like, real claim to fame was? The Budweiser commercial where the, the frogs go, Bud, Bud. <laughs> yeah, that's where he, like, really started. And then he did, like, Mousetrap, the movie, and The Ring, or whatever. But, like, yeah, he was the Budweiser genius for that. That's funny. And, but Gore's awesome. But I, I didn't think that The Lone Ranger was that bad. I just... I mean, I love the fact that Johnny likes to push the boundaries and do everything. I just, Johnny is, um, uh, is Tonto. It's kind of like, I mean, I think, especially like him, I mean, so Hollywood, so like, you know, would be like hired American Indian. I mean, they got past that whole, uh, um, like Burt Reynolds playing an Indian and Navajo Joe or whatever. Yeah. It's like, you know, I didn't even realize that I was watching, um, it was a Mickey Rooney movie, oh, Babes in Toyland or something like that. And the whole cast was about a bunch of, you know, these kids that are, their parents were all in Bobville or whatever. Well, then they're all doing, you know, like, mammy. And it's like, dude, you can't do that nowadays. Like, you know, blackface. Yeah. And it's, that's a no-no. And it's like, oh, yeah. so I, I think there's there's American Indians out there can act. So you should add, just like, you know, Jay Silverhose, who, which I live on where they, filmed the original Lone Ranger, the TV show. Like, I, oh, right. my driveway up into my complex is, I pass the Lone Ranger rock every day, in and out. Uh, so that's where the Lone Ranger is, hi-ho, silver! And so when my daughter watches it with me, she, she's like, she knows all the rocks. Because, you know, they, you know, when they ride around, it's, it's the same scenery, and we can walk around. So when they built our complexes, that was part of it. They weren't allowed to touch any of the rocks. So they would move, you know, dirt and stuff so they could make complexes, but, None of the rocks were moved, so you literally walk by and go, that's potato rock, or that's bird rock, or that's, you know. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so it's all really cool. Oh, that's cool. It's right across the street from where uh, Manson was. So we could go across the street to Manson's cave and all that stuff. It was kind of spooky, too. That's crazy. Does anybody else have any? 
Yeah. Uh, where was the first Pirates of the Caribbean shot? Uh, well, we did some of it at um, on stage the, uh, at Disney, and then for most of the on-water stuff, we were down in uh, an island, which is almost to Venezuela, in the Caribbean, called St. Vincent. And, um, uh, yeah, it was kind of kind of sketchy. I mean, you're too young to, to know about some of the stuff, but there's a lot of disease, and, um, yeah. Yeah. H... I and B, yeah, really bad. That's because there's a lot of, you know, bad stuff out there. daddies and yeah. daughters. And, and it's really like it was just gave me the creeps, you know. Yeah. But um, it was cool because we they had a volcano on the island. It wasn't mm -hmm. active at the time, but I, I don't know when it was last. But we, we didn't see any bugs. We climbed through the jungle all the way up to the top of the volcano. Mm -hmm. And then like dummies, we climbed, there was like a rope, you know, with a, a knot, you know, so you load, load yourself down, like Batman kind of oh, style, wow. all the way down into the inside of the volcano, and you're walking around. And there's one area that's, you know, it's pretty big, it's probably about as big as, maybe four times the size of this room. Uh -huh. That was gray and smoldering, like, you know, steam and stuff coming off. And you're like, oh man, if this thing goes now, we're, you know, we wouldn't even know it, but you'd be dead before you knew it. But, the, you know, you go down a couple hundred feet going downwards one thing trying to climb back out is like ah you know it's a, it's you're already tired at yeah. that point and then when you're up in the rim of the volcano the wind coming off the island you know up the you, you gotta like really hold yourself because it, it could totally just blow you right off mm -hmm. into the mm -hmm. so and it got really cold real fast and the clouds were below you so it's like you can't even see you land down below it's so high Anyone else? Uh, so, like, early in your career, you were a guest on Howard Stern show. Like, what was that like, and how does it feel like radio? Like, back then, you would just listen on the radio. And of course, right. podcasting, you can, like, listen to it anywhere, like, on iTunes. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how, you know, I, um, I love Howard. Uh, obviously, we're not the same here, like, you know, politically, whatever. But back in the day, it's, it's funny. He talks about Trump, but Trump just... Like, I wish Mr. Trump would just, like, he could just turn off his mouth mm -hmm. so we didn't have to hear it and then people couldn't complain. Mm -hmm. But, like, Howard was the exact same thing to me. It's like, mm -hmm. he said things that we all think, you know, but back then he would push the envelope and say naughty things on the radio. You're not supposed to talk like that, blah, blah, blah. And, um, and I've been to gentlemen's clubs with Howard, mm -hmm. and he's no saint. He's very much a pig, and I love him to death, but it's like, dude, don't cut on this man when you're the exact same thing, mm -hmm. but just because the public doesn't, you know, no, they think that you're just a personality on the radio. No, that's you in real life. That you're, you know, you cheated on your wife. You, you know, mm -hmm. this whole thing. It's like, yeah. don't mm -hmm. cut on them, uh, somebody else for something. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Like, don't call a it's a pot calling the kettle black. black. That's exactly. What you, you know, that's what he is. But he's, you know, it was fun. It was, I, I did a pay per view event with him. It was like it opened up. Uh, he had a 90, 94 New Year's Eve pay-per-view event. Mm -hmm. And it was a bunch of um, mm -hmm. women and um, whatever dressed up. And uh, it was like a pageant, beauty pageant, whatever. And, mm -hmm. You know, here I am next to um, Sherman Helmsley, which is George Jefferson, mm -hmm. you know, as one of the, the guest voters and stuff. And you all know who, uh, Lorena Bobbitt, or mm -hmm. remember the Bobbitt story? Mm -hmm. And that guy now became a celebrity now because you know, what his wife did to him, and he was one of the celebrity, mm -hmm. you know, judges or whatever, so it was kind of weird, like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I love Howard, but, again, I think politics and, and movie stars should keep their, you know, they're no more smarter, you know, they're no more smart than anybody else. Mm -hmm. You don't hear Stallone and, mm -hmm. you know, all these other guys talking about politics. It's mm -hmm. it's only the, the Clooney's and those kind of guys that, like, mm -hmm. think that Whatever they say, the rest of us should go, oh, okay, and follow mm -hmm. suit. It's like, no. Mm -hmm. We should all be able to think for ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. form our own opinion. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, that's all the time we've got. <laughs>